Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the Bryce Gow Saga. And uh, this time we're going to attack the elephant in the room. This is it. This is the motor assembly uh, for the auto tuning. And um, what we've established is that when we activate the tuning on the front, it tries, it's sort of trying to move, but um, something stopping it. And I seem to remember that uh, this is exactly what I had when I did the Freiburg. Now it's been quite a long time, so I had to do a lot of research. A lot of people have helped me. Uh, I've had some very, very good uh, information from some of my subscribers, and I thank you all for that. But the first thing to do is to check the motor itself. Before going into the control circuitry, we'll check the motor. And let me show you what I found. Now, let me explain what happens here. There are four windings on here, on these opposite corners. Two of them are controlled by the AC mains, and the other two are sort of uh, controlled by the control circuitry. And the idea is that, depending on the phasing, um, this thing is forced or made to rotate in a particular direction or the other. But um, that's not that important right now. What is important right now is to understand that there are four windings. The phasing on them is, is critical. It's very important. The way they're wired. They've each got a red and a yellow wire coming out of there, which indicates the, the phase. And what we basically need to do is to check the continuity in each of those. So we've got, I'm calling this one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've already done a drawing. I'll show you the result. If we measure between, this is a common point, and this guy, we get about 1K, 1.01K, okay? If we measure this one, we get, we don't get 1K. We're getting 4.6 or something, and I've measured as high as 6K, so we've got a problem on that winding. If we go to this one, there's the common point there. The two reds are wired together. And we measure here. We get, oops, get 1K and we measure this one and we get, yeah, nearest damn at 1K. There are other components in the circuit. So we've already established that one of these windings is not reading the same as the others. And um, I've done quite a lot of reading. Obviously, uh, these windings are supposed to be identical. So they're supposed to measure 1K each. So what I need to do now is I'm well I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dismantle this, remove it, and then I'm going to um, see if I can de determine if there's anything obvious or obviously wrong with those windings. I remember the last time I had to replace one of these, and I think I know how to get one of these. In fact, I have a donor body for a um, a similar one. I'm not sure that the motors are identical, but I'm sure they'll work. Um, so I'll, I can either take out one of the windings and replace the winding that's faulty here, or I could actually probably replace the entire motor assembly. We'll see how it goes. I have no idea whether the other one's working completely either. So it's a bit of a, a hit and miss. What I'm going to do now is I've, um, I've started doing this video also for my own reference so that I can make sure that I know how to put it back together. The easiest way is actually to film it or photograph it. I've done a drawing of this, and in the drawing you can see how it's wired. So as you can see, the four windings have a particular way of uh, being wired together. And I'm showing the AC in coming in through the one capacitor. And then there's the, um, the other two windings, which are controlled by the control circuitry. And that has the other capacitor in there. They're practically the same values. So I've got a reference, a good reference of how this thing is wired up. And I think now I can go ahead and um, dismantle it. So what I need to do now is I need to desolder the wires from here that actually go off into the radio. They don't stay in the unit. Most of them do. Most of them are the actual windings that come up to the top. So I need to remove a few connections here. And I'll make sure that I keep a good record of it. So what we basically have here is we've got, on one, we've got the purple wire. This goes, I believe, to the capacitor over there. Uh, purple. Then we've got the other one has got uh, yellow and blue. This one here is a common for two reds. And the actual windings that it comes from, I've recorded on that, uh, on the drawing I've just shown. Then over here, we've got another four wires. 
we've got the transparent one on four, the yellow one on five, and the two green ones are on six. Okay, so now I can desolder those, move them aside, and we'll have a better basis to work from. Now the other wire I need to disconnect is this ground wire that's connected to here. I think I'll remove it from here. Okay. And unless I'm mistaken, I think that's all the desoldering that's necessary. Now we need to remove this connector here so it slides out. And if I'm not mistaken, it just takes loosening these little guys. That's actually got a ground tag to this point over here. So we'll see if this comes out when we... Still pretty stiff in there. I think maybe we just take out the ground tag and the rest will go back when I remove the um, when I remove that. Now I see three screws with grommets, rubber grommets holding this onto the chassis. I've got one here, one here, and one on the underside, and I think that's all it takes. So I'll start with this one here. So that's all loose. Let me just make sure this comes out. Yep, perfect. Brilliant. It's done. Let's keep these screws safe with their little washers. Don't want to lose those. Okay. The motor is out. Now comes the interesting part.
Right, what can I conclude from here? The, um, this uh, winding is definitely not measuring 1K. In fact, it oscillates, um, it alternates rather. Uh, I measured 4K at one point, 6K at another point, and at the end it's giving me 10K. So there's obviously something wrong. There's obviously some kind of uh, break on here. It's probably not, I don't understand. Yeah, the wind is blowing, we've got a storm going. Um, I don't understand why it would give us 10k because the windings if you have a short you'd get less resistance and I can't understand how a break would give you that lower resistance um, so there might be some sort of carbon residue where this thing opened and that carbon is acting as a resistor and therefore it's uh, alternating between 4 and 10k so um, the other the other comment is the dismantling of the whole motor is not difficult at all. This kind of video that that I take um, is actually quite useful because then it shows you how to put it back together. No big deal. What is a big deal is trying to get this thing off. This thing was stuck in there, and when I pushed it down, these formers, which are very very brittle, broke. But it's not a problem. It's on the top side, so the part that uh, you're going to put in. Um, adjacent to the rotor is fine and that's not a big deal the big deal is the fact this thing's got a brake on it and I really don't know how I'm going to go about it because I'm tempted I'm tempted to rewind but Jesus look at that that's a lot of turns and I don't have a winder you know sometimes you get lucky and the brake is very close to the top sometimes not always very seldom in fact but when it's close to the top you can sort of just unwind a few turns and you're okay and the number of turns you're unwinding is uh, if it's small enough it doesn't really make a difference you can even patch it if you like I've done that before on output transformers old output transformers especially but the point is here we've got a uh, the coil for one of the motor sections which need to be quite well balanced and this one is not. So I'm going to um, see what I can find. I need to find one of these or four of these or a new motor or something. I've got a donor body uh, with a motor in it. I might have to dismantle that and see if it's the same type of coils and if it is then I'm going to consider myself very lucky. In the meantime, perhaps one of you can give me a suggestion. Maybe these things are available somewhere and I can just buy one. They seem pretty uh, standard. They all seem to be the same. You know, when you put them in, you've got to make sure you get the uh, orientation right, the, the phase right. But other than that, it seems to be pretty standard. So I need to keep this thing as a very careful reference and see what I can find. So I'm going to sign off for now beg you for some help if you can and um, come back when I've got some answers. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. And if you did, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.